This video is sponsored by Aura. Hey there, demons. It's me, your boy. A paranormal activity movie starring demons and cholos. How come nobody told me? In the barrio, bad things happen when the sky turns black. You want penis enlargement pills? Ah, go off, bro. How come nobody told me that this was pretty damn entertaining and scary? But how do we get here? How do we go from a boring middle class suburban couple to the hood? That's not great, but it is pretty damn entertaining. Well, let's start at the beginning. Back in 2007, Paranormal Activity came out and it was unique and scary. Making a lot of money, it spawned three sequels, but by then the premise got a bit stale. You can't keep getting away with it! So what to do? Like all ever expanding franchises, diversify. Did it work? I don't know, it made $93 million and it was entertaining and scary. Well for me, but in all fairness, hood horror films aren't set in the bar that high. That motherfucker's, he, you killed my fucking brother. That motherfucker is not real. Let's get into it. The film starts off in Oxnard, California with the valedictorian Oscar giving a very emotional speech Ese culo bota caca. with one of the main characters, Hector, recording his friend Jesse at graduation. After graduation, they take pics, generic cholo stance and all. what is that? And then they go say what's up to Oscar and hey, that's Richard Cabral. Now it's fiesta time and it's a good time. <laughs> In the middle of all of this, they're also talking trash and chisme about their downstairs neighbor, Ana, who might be a witch slash bruja. The next day, Jesse and Hector are in the street doing hood rat stuff and being chased by cholos. It's an entertaining time. In the middle of all of this, they see Oscar leaving their weird brujeria neighbor's apartment house. And in the afternoon, it's more good old Mexican times, like drinking tequila for no reason. And singing sad Mexican songs. <laughs> this gets interrupted by weird ass noises from the brujeria neighbor downstairs, so the boys spy on them through their vents with their GoPro camera. They try to find witches but end up fighting naked bitches, but Abuelita interrupts. <laughs> Oh, come on. I'm trying to see too. Now the old brujeria neighbor lady is doing some brujeria witch work, but she's old and wrinkly and ruins the mood. I just lost my boner, man. My dick's soft like forever. And then the following day, they tell their friend Marisol the drama and chisme. So they go mess with the weird lady even more. <laughs> Following this, it's more hood rat activities and they gotta put it in reverse, Terry. Put it in reverse. But Oscar ruins this plan. Turns out that Oscar wasted that weird witch lady, neighbor, and now it's a crime scene. Later, they're speculating about what happened and at night, the boys smoke up some mota and decide to go check up the neighbor's apartment slash murder scene and... <laughs> I can't do that shit, man. Why are you so scared? Shut up. Here, they find some weird stuff along. It's like a nursery. Stuff yeah. along with Oscar's older brother, who we'll just call Richard. Also trying to play detective, trying to find out why Oscar wasted the witch lady. Bitch, they used to stay right here. You know about her? No, honestly, we don't know shit, man. Heard that he did this shit. That wasn't my little brother. In the morning, Jesse wakes up with a bunch of weird ass stuff, like a bite mark, bloody sheets and his favorite chihuahua now scared of him. Ground man, we don't like you anymore, man. <laughs> oh. Now they're studying the brujeria and playing with this modern type of Ouija board. Is Jesse handsome? I'm not gonna stroke my d I got lotion on my d right now. I'm just stroking my shit. I'm horny as fuck, man. I'm a freak. Abuelita catches them though and gets mad. Can't blame her though. The day after this, the homies are playing basketball but get pressed by this grown ass cholo homie who's like 45 years old pressing these teenagers. Go check out the back yeah, Fight back. Fight back. He looked like the type of food to brag about it too to all his homies. But not this time because the ghost protects Jesse. Stop it! Stop! Oh, oh. 
Later on, they try to review the footage of what just happened, but they can't because their laptop gets hacked and their online identity gets stolen. But worry not, because this video is sponsored by Aura. Dealing with the paranormal can be scary, but you know what's even worse? Dealing with identity theft. With the many horrors of identity theft, it's nice to know that Aura can protect you from all of these things. How do you handle a ghost? Well, you splash holy water on it. But how do you deal with identity theft? Well, that's a lot more complicated. But Aura takes steps to completely eradicate the risk by demanding complex data brokers to opt out your personal information so like that, hackers, scammers, and identity thieves won't be able to get all of your personal information, passwords, social media, finances, and so much more. Aura does this by giving you a multitude of tools like password protection, VPN, opt-out requests, parental controls, and threat detection. And you know what else is scary? Paying full price for a product. But click on my special link or QR code and try Aura completely free for 14 days. Don't wait and be part of the over billions of dollars loss from identity theft alone. Get Aura today and stay protected. So thank you Aura for sponsoring the video and let's get back to it. So now they go and interact with the paranormal again. Did you miss those guys up at the park? Are you my guardian angel? And it later turns out that Hector kinda gets paranormal superpowers. Oh, oh my god! He's a phantom. I just feel like I can do anything right now. At night, they try to use their paranormal activities to get some spooky booty. I don't know what the hell that means, but I said it. And they continue the night desperately trying to get that spooky booty at the empty murder scene slash apartment that was their neighbors and it's a bad idea baby that used to live here she got murdered oh hell no man what the f <laughs> it's revealed that oscar was living in the apartment's crawl space to which later jesse also finds oscar possessed as hell in his own house and tells him that he's basically haunted too like him it's inside you too isn't it jesse the only way to stop it is to yourself before you hurt someone, Jesse. So he runs out of the house and he chases Oscar and... Oscar! That boy dead. That boy dead. The following day, the gang investigates the neighbor's secret crawl space and Jesse finds out that the witch had pictures of him and his pregnant mother who died giving birth to him, which is also what happened to Oscar's mom since they're both firstborns. Also, Oscar was adopted, so the gang goes to talk to Richard about his brother Oscar. Our little boys, firstborn boys. That's right. But Oscar was adopted. And they unveil that whole marked one conspiracy slash agenda, and Hector takes this random number. They're at the store now and Jesse gets possessed and rages out of nowhere because he catches online personality Sneeko trying to talk to Marisol. Jesse, dude, let's fucking go. You, wanna wa you want me to watch your clips? Watch my clips. As time passes, Jesse gets more and more sus by the minute, so they go and question the modern Ouija board again, although they get some undesired answers. I said, leave me alone. Just leave me alone, now. In the middle of the night, Jorge hears his dog in the neighbor's crawl space. So he goes down there to get him and he spots some creepy ass Easter eggs from Paranormal Activity 2. <laughs> Again, the more time passes, the more creepy and sus Jesse gets. <laughs> what the dog doing? So they go check in on him and ask him what's cracking and it turns out those lips were because them John's ashy as hell. Also, for some reason, Jesse's neck gets paranormally long. But this leads to Marisol and Hector to calling that random number that Hector stole. And it turns out being this paranormal activity lady. And I don't know if she's an Easter egg from the previous movies again. Please let me know in the comments. I haven't seen these films in like forever. But the lady basically tells them the whole rigmarole of what's going on and how it's the firstborns and all that. Anyway, they'll perform a final ritual and then he'll go back to normal. He won't be Jesse. Anyways, they talk this up to Abuelita and she goes to one of those Mexican candle shops. You know, the ones don't act like you've never been in one of those. And they give her some holy eggs to crack on Jesse. Hey! Doing this makes him go sicko mode though. Jesse! What the fuck? Oh! 
After this incident, Jesse is bedridden for a couple of days until Hector finds him pushing Abuelita down to her death. Did she actually get got? I don't know, it's my first time watching it. Let's continue. Marisol and Hector try and go see Abuelita at the hospital, but they get attacked by Jesse on their way. And bruh, why does a car door look like that? This is definitely a prop car. Now after knocking him out, they're trying to take Jesse to that one place that that one paranormal activity lady told them, but some mysterious ass car ambushes them and takes Jesse. So the two go to Richard's house for some help. So they go to Richard's house to ask him for help to go kick some paranormal booty. And he's basically like, Oh, yeah, perro. Go smoke these bitches. I hope those bullets are dipped in some holy water. Now they're at that finalizing cult location that the lady was talking about and they snoop around, but it's empty. I don't think anybody's here. <laughs> And bro, the woman not doing shit but screaming when it all hits the fan really makes this film believable. That's accurate as hell. 10 out of 10 authenticity, real orales. Oh, watch out! Ah! The ah! Richard's character stays behind and probably gets got, while the other Cholofu gets got too, but Maricel and Hector are able to get away and trap themselves inside this cult house with a big old pentagram in the center. Hector and Maricel later get separated and I surely hope she's okay. <laughs> Damn, that girl did. Now it's just Hector and he tries to hide and fend for himself, but he gets chased by all these ghosts and Jesse. When he thinks it's safe, he comes out and ends up getting chased by Jesse again and runs around and somehow ends up back to the first paranormal activity couple's house? Hold up, what? Anyways, turns out that Hector causes the end of paranormal activity one. Lisa! Lisa! The fuck wrong with her? You guys seen the ending, then you guys know what I'm talking about. <laughs> And while he's running from the lady, he ends up being eaten by Jesse. And then some random ass lady turns off the camera and the film ends at that. So what the hell was this all for? Can somebody please explain? Overall, Paranormal Activity Marked Ones was a pretty damn solid and surprisingly good film. I think there's like six films total in the series. And I honestly only remember watching like the first two or three. But the only problem with those were that they were a little too monotone and nothing would happen in the end. Just a small little minuscule paranormal event. And then something big would happen, which would make that big scene that much more scary. But if I'm being honest, the rest of the movie kind of boring. But here, the hood elements kind of keep it entertaining throughout the whole entire film. Like, not gonna lie, shit had me intrigued the whole way. And another thing that I honestly liked about the film was that uh, it actually had dangerous threats. Like, I remember in the other films, it was just like a small little thing that would happen here and there. But here it's like, damn, how are you gonna protect yourself from this shit? That's what I like, where movies where the threats are actually a threat too. You know, like if it's a masked killer who goes into your house, what are you gonna do? Boom, obviously. But with ghosts and brujaria and magic and all that, like, how do you defend yourself from that? Not gonna lie, I feel kind of bad for you guys watching this video and now me ruining it in case you didn't watch it. This is my first time watching it. Pretty damn feed in all honesty. But yeah, damn, I, I honestly cannot believe it. They pulled it off. They were finally able to brown face an established franchise and not turn it to complete shit. Damn, props to Paramount Pictures. Please don't copyright claim this video. I'm basically giving you free and good publicity. Also, I don't know how accurate this is to the continuity, but for me, I enjoyed the video. 8.5 out of 10 orderless is good for the spooky season. Thank you to all my special spooky Patreons and to Aura for sponsoring the video. And until next time, later.